Welcome back to another video on fractional calculus. In this lesson, we're going to derive the fractional calculus version of the product rule. Recall that with regular derivatives, the derivative of the product of two functions, f and g, is the first function times the derivative of the second, plus the second function times the derivative of the first. In fractional calculus, you might be tempted to say then that the fractional derivative of the product of two functions is similar. The first function times the fractional derivative of the second plus the second function times the fractional derivative of the first. This is actually incorrect, and I'll show you a counterexample explaining why. Suppose I have two functions. The first is the exponential of k1 times x, and the second is the exponential of k2x. k1 and k2 are just constants, they're real numbers. If I take the fractional derivative of order alpha of the product of these functions, then that's the same as combining the exponentials like so and taking the fractional derivative of that quantity. And if I do that, the k1 plus k2 comes down with the exponent alpha, while I've got the exponential still remaining. Of course, I've used the Liouville definition of the fractional derivative here, which I encourage you to look up from a previous video. However, if I use my quote-unquote proposed product rule on this product of exponentials, I'll have the exponential of k1x times the exponential of k2x times k2 to the power alpha, plus the same product of exponentials, but now with k1 to the alpha multiplying it. If I combine these terms and simplify, then I get the sum of k1 to the alpha plus k2 to the alpha times the exponential of k1 plus k2x. This is clearly different from what we found up here when we didn't use the product rule and combined the exponentials a priori. So this means that the proposed product rule we had up here is clearly wrong and we need to come up with something different. So let's go back and start by using the typical product rule for first derivatives we had up previously. If we now take the second derivative of the product of two functions, this is what we'll get. This time you'll have to use the product rule on the first term, which will come out to this, and on the second term, which will come out to this. I can combine the product of the first derivatives and obtain the following. Now what if I take the third derivative of the product of the two functions? Well, that just means that I'll have to differentiate the second derivative expression once more. And this repeat differentiation will involve once again applying the product rule, but to three different terms this time. If we do that, this is what we'll get. And finally, if we combine the like terms and simplify, we'll end up with the following. Let's analyze these successive derivatives that we got by sequentially applying the product rule. Notice that the first derivative of the product looks just like a simple a plus b. Meanwhile, the second derivative looks very similar to a plus b whole squared, so a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And finally, this third derivative of the product looks like a plus b whole cubed, which is just a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. Recognizing this pattern allows us to write a general rule about the nth derivative of the product of two functions. And the way to write that general rule is to recall the binomial theorem, which states that the sum of two numbers a and b raised to the power n, where n is some natural number, can be written as the summation from a running index k going from 0 to n of n choose k times a to the power n minus k times b to the power k. Of course, n choose k is just n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. Using the same binomial theorem logic, we can then write the nth derivative of the product of f times g as the sum over k from 0 to n of n choose k times the n minus k derivative of f times the kth derivative of g. You will recognize that this general formula follows the same pattern, but instead of a and b in the summation, I have the n minus kth derivative of f and the kth derivative of g. Needless to say, if I take the zeroth derivative of some function using the summation formula, that's basically saying that I have the function itself, so just keep that in mind. If I now extend the same formula to fractional derivatives of order alpha, then my n inside the summation basically turns into an alpha, while the k is now summed over till infinity. I'll call this equation 1, by the way. Of course, instead of factorials being used for alpha choose k, we now need to use the gamma function. Recall that the gamma function, which I've discussed already in my gamma function video and in a previous video on fractional calculus, is essentially a generalized factorial. It's defined according to this formula for some non-negative integer z. And if I have a non-negative integer n, then the gamma function evaluated at n plus 1 is the same as n factorial. This is a property that you can demonstrate using the formula for gamma functions. 
So that means that the combination of two quantities alpha and k, which are not necessarily integers, can be written as the following in terms of the gamma function using the properties of the gamma function that I just discussed. Of course, this then restricts me from using negative integers for alpha, which we're okay with for now because we don't really care at the moment about derivatives of negative order. For instance, the negative first derivative of something is actually just its integral, and we're going to be dealing with that a bit later on in the series. So using this product rule formula, let's actually verify this equation for the fractional derivative of the product of these two exponentials, the exponential of k1 times x times the exponential of k2 times x. We showed that the actual answer for this derivative could be obtained by combining the exponentials a priori and taking the fractional derivative of that combined exponential, which would then come out to the following using the Liouville definition. So now, let's apply the formula for the product rule of fractional derivatives that we got using the binomial theorem equation from equation 1 to these particular two functions. If I do that, this is what I'll get. If I use then the Liouville definition of the fractional derivative, then the k1 comes out of this derivative with the power alpha minus k, and the k2 comes out of this derivative with the power k, while I've got the same two exponentials left behind. But these two exponentials don't have any k terms that we need to sum over, so I can just take them out of the summation and combine them to form the exponential of k1 plus k2 times x. And this is what I'll end up with when I end up doing that. Now what I've got left inside the summation is really just k1 plus k2 to the power alpha using the generalized binomial theorem where the power is a non-integer. So in the end, I get the exact same expression that I'm supposed to verify, and so we have verified equation 1, which is the product rule for a fractional derivative. I'm just going to put this down here so we can summarize what we've discussed in this video so far. I'm going to copy paste equation 1, the meaning of the alpha choose k combination, and the definition of the gamma function so that you have everything in one place for the final result. Of course then alpha cannot be a negative integer because then we wouldn't be able to use the gamma function as it's undefined at those points. Anyway, that should do it for this video. I'd like to thank the following patrons for their support, and if you enjoyed the lesson feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Vaughn, signing out.